So let's uh, revisit, and what is the purpose of this spreadsheet? Well, the reason for the purpose of the spreadsheet is that the factory service manual doesn't cover off um, wear on the crank journals themselves. So whilst they are marked on the ends with uh, how they came out of the factory, the truth of the matter is predominantly the uh, big end bearings uh, wear. Uh, the main bearings do wear, but not quite as much. So the whole purpose of this spreadsheet is we are assuming that uh, that people have an accurate or have the ability to get accurate readings on their crankshaft for both the uh, the big end bearings and the main bearings. Um, if you can't get those measurements, then uh, this uh, spreadsheet is is invalid, really. So let's uh, let's start off. So the the known fixed um, journals that do not wear are basically the crankcases themselves. And uh, we, we've identified here how we basically, um, from the picture, select um, which size journal we put in here. Um, so they'll be marked one to seven on the main bearing. So we can put three in there. We can put one in here. Okay. And that's how you select the journal size for the cranks themselves here. Now, normally I find that normally these always tend to be two, but that's not fixed in stone, but normally they end, end up being set as two. Um, you'll find they sometimes they are quite difficult to read because they're hand engraved. Um, so that's the crankshaft. So the, these are fixed. These don't wear these journals because they're line board. And then we've got the Conrod journals here, one to six. So these are the big end bearings. And on the side of the Conrod is basically stamped one to three. Okay. Now this will vary on the 900s, but in essence, I think it's only the, the these here which will be A, B, C rather than one, two, three. But the the philosophy is the same. So here, this gives the the Conrad journals. Okay. Now basically, this will then set from the uh, the measurements in the factory service manual the median of what those those tolerances are. And well, I think we're talking four microns here, so we're talking next to nothing in terms of. Of selecting the maximum, the minimum of that uh, that that uh, that size there. So we are liter literally talking four microns. And then this is where we put in the crank as measured. So these would be the measurements that you've either undertaken yourself, or will have been undertaken by uh, an engineering shop. So basically, what you do here, you you type in your measurements here um, by by typing in thirty five point nine eight two using the keyboard. I'm not going to do it now because it's uh, a little bit difficult. But I think you get the idea. So you type these in here, you set what your optimum oil clearance is, and then this then here will calculate the bearing thickness and look up down here um, what that is. One thing I bring to your mind here is this is what the factory standard oil clearance is set to, between 20 and 60 microns. So what I try and do here is I put an optimum oil clearance of 35. Now, why do I do that? Well, it's basically an, it's a balancing act between maintaining oil pressure um, to keep the engine quiet and, uh, and, and, uh, and maintain a good oil pressure. Now, how to keep the engine quiet? It keeps the engine quiet because you're maintaining oil pressure on the primary chain uh, tensioner, which is hydraulically fed. So when the oil drops down to idle to, say, 20 PSI, you're only basically getting about 10 PSI pressure on that plunger in the crankcase. So by setting these up correctly in the cam journals, you'll maintain oil pressure and obviously having a good oil pump. But we'll come back to that in the series. So this way. OK, so welcome back. So today we're going to go through and look at why you should uh, uh, take the opportunity when you got your engine apart uh, to basically balance the con rods and match the pistons to the con rods. This is a very simple process that uh, you can do at home, as you'll see here. So I've got one old corn rod, a gudgeon pin, a set of uh, kitchen scales, accurate kitchen scales, um, and uh, the rods and pistons. But we'll come back to, to how, how we actually balance them going forward, but we're going to do the measurement first. So the question is, uh, why do it? And it's very simple. The relative centrifugal force, or G-force, on a CBX or any bike come to that, um, is as follows and on the CBX we're running basically uh, 54, um, 54 millimeters of stroke so to calculate it we take half the uh, half the stroke which is the radius of the crank and we multiply it by a factor in the RPM 
So I've done the, previously done these calculations, so here we go. So basically at 5,000 RPM uh, on a CBX with the crank as it is on, on, on uh, half the stroke is 748 Gs. At 9,500 RPM is 2,699 Gs. So what does that actually mean in terms of the weight that you would exclude that the crank is carrying um, at certain gram weights? Well, basically a one gram is a perfectly matched set, set of rods and pistons. If you get better than that, you're, you're, you're into territory that uh, is outside of the normal uh, workshop that can do that for you. Um, but uh, three grams is what you would normally expect a stock, uh, a stock bike to come out with. If you look on the side of the rods here, you've got a number. That number three there defines basically the weight of the rod. And so you would expect to see all number three rods within the uh, within within a, within the engine. Okay, on a CBX. But what I want to say is, uh, I've done a, I've done numerous engine rebuilds. And I have actually seen, even on a CB1100RC, the last one I did, had all matching numbers, but I was seeing, as near as damn it, 5 grams of differential on across the, the set of rods, um, which I, I then corrected and, and had them all within about 2 grams. And why would we do it? So the reason is, quite simply, it's down to performance, it's down to engine wear, and it's basically down to uh, a nice riding experience, so there's no vibration. The CB1100R is renowned for vibration because it's got solid engine mounts on a four-cylinder motor and especially around about 4,000 RPM. Now I've never experienced it because all the bikes I build I balance the rods. Now you can, get, you can take this to a professional and I know some of you do and spend a lot of money but this is stuff that you can do at home to, to make, uh, make these improvements. So let's just come back to what this actually means. Okay. So 748 G's at 5,269 G's at uh, 9,500. So I want to put this into context. If we take the median of what that comes out the factory at, it basically means at 5,000 RPM cruising speed, the crank is, is throwing around an additional offset of 2.244 kilograms, okay, or 4.95 pounds, okay, against the other, the other rods, okay. So it's, it, that's what we're saying at. At 9,500 RPM, we're looking at another 9 kgs, or as near as damn it, 20 pounds. Okay, so the engine is out of balance by 20 pounds at 9,500 RPM. Then if we go to, to basically 5 grams, we're in, we're in territory which is, uh, which is unpleasant. Okay, so 3.74 kilograms at touring speed, that's about 75 miles an hour, um, or... 8.23 pounds um, so you can see that significant now when when you're then you're at 9500 rpm the bike is throwing around an additional 13.5 kgs against the other pistons so that you can see now where that that vibration comes from so if you're throwing around 20 pounds or sorry 30 pounds against another piston you can understand why the bike's vibrating so there we go so that's the reasons why we're going to go through and start the, the process of measuring now. All these rods have already, and pistons have been set up already. I'm not going to go through the process of doing it, but I just want to show you what the outcome is. Catch up soon. Okay, so welcome back. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through and we're going to basically weigh and we're going to match these pistons. Uh, I'm, really, I'm just going to briefly touch on about how you would remove weight off these, uh, these rods. But the main thing today is, is to try and get so you can balance them to get a nice uh, nice ride out in the bike. So I really want to uh, just run a couple of things. On the rod, you've got two things. You've got a letter, which is the, the weight code. And on this side, you've got the, the, the number, which is the journal code. So the weight code in this particular instance is what we're interested in. So you can see here, this is stamped up with a C. And all these are Bs. Um, so on here, we've got a B. Now, I just want to uh, share with you... Uh, what I was talking about earlier on, on my piece of paper. So if I weigh this B-rod, okay, I'm reading 340 grams off that particular rod. If I put the C-rod in, I'm reading 348 grams. So we can see there, there's 8 grams difference between a B and a C-rod. So if you get these mixed up, you can do, 
it, well, it probably won't destroy the bike, but it won't it certainly won't be a pleasant ride if you're running seven grams at nine and a half thousand RPM, multiplied by I think it was two thousand six hundred and ninety nine. So that's the reason we go through this process. So I've actually matched these rods up. So the first thing that, that you have to do is actually excuse the slip gauge on it. We'll come back to that. I've got it set up for expediency. So we're going to basically measure the weight of each rod. So number one is 340. Number two is 342, so that's within two grams. Number three is uh, 242. Number four is, two, is uh, 341. Number five is 342. And number six is 340. So they're all within uh, within a couple of grams. I'm not sure if I said 242, but it should be 340 grams that they're weighing. And that's without the uh, the bearings in, in the, the shell bearings in here. So the next thing is what we're going to do is just look at where the weight distribution is on the rod. Because whilst this may be equal across the rods, we've got to check the weight here. Because this is a lateral weight going up and down. And this here is the centrifugal rate weight doing that. So... You can see that this is where the, the, the weight here is what's important. Now Honda would have obviously got that sorted out, but it's just worthwhile going through and checking here. So we're just going to do number one now, and we're going to weigh that. That's 294. We'll swap it over 180 degrees. That's 296 that way, so that's an average of 295. 295. Two nine six. That's a, a two nine nine five. Two nine six. Two nine Two nine seven. That's within two grams. Two nine six. Two nine seven. Two nine four. 295 okay so so we can basically see now that the weight of these at the base is uh, is within a couple of grams so that's uh, that's absolutely fine for general general use we're not trying to be a, a race performance shop here i'm just trying to get a nice ride out of this particular bike so all those are good so that's that so i think i might have shown you but so i've re removed a bit on here to get these bearings back this was this was uh, about two grams over the rest of them so I've just taken this back using a flapper wheel to bring this back here and here. But obviously by, by running on here you can see where the weight distribution is at the top at the bottom and where to remove it. But I'm not going to go into too much detail. Okay, so I'm now going to take my slip gauge off. Now what I'm going to do is just reset this a sec back to zero. So I've already, I've already um, set up these, uh, these pistons and rods. Okay. So they're all in sequence one to six. So the base of the circlet, the two bearings, and the uh, the uh, the piston pins in here, or the small end, whichever you want to call it, um, and they're all in here. So we got the weight of all the mass of all of the uh, the piston and cone rod here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to measure the mass of the rod and the piston. So in this particular case, number one is five, sort of five, going between five, seven, nine, so we'll call that 580. It was reading five between five, seven, nine and 581. So that's 582, so it's more like 581 on the other one. So that's 580. So 
high rate one. So that's 580. So that one's 579. Okay, so we've basically got three grams there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to, I think one was reading 582, 581. What I'm going to do is just have a go at swapping this around and see if we can get this better as a better match. So that's 580 now. Let's just see what this one is. So that's 579 now. So I've just swapped those around to get a better match. So we're just going to go through and double check this again very quickly. 580. Five eight two. Five eighty. Five eight two. Five eighty. We're getting 579 there. I'll go back and double check that. I want to get that, improve that. But you can see we're basically, basically within three grams there by mixing and matching. Now at the factory, that could easily be seven or eight grams out. And that's where your vibration comes through for the bike. So this is all stuff that you can do at home. It's not complicated. If, if you're not going to match the rods, then at least you can match the... If you're not going to balance the rods and, and check the weight on them, at least you can match the pistons to the rods. So I hope that's been useful and we'll catch up soon.